Once upon a time, there was a special land where kids could come face to face with familiar characters from their favorite storybooks and nursery rhymes. And to get there, you would simply cross over the Rainbow Bridge and into Fairyland. My name is Mary McAllister Scaglione. I am a native of Tampa. The first thing I remember about Fairyland, of course, is the Rainbow Bridge, because that was the symbol that you were going to be climbing those stairs and going into the area where all the fairy tale uh, characters were exhibited. It was one of those places that was made just for kids, and kids felt like they were important when they went there. Tampa Bay History Center looks back at this place of imagination and childhood memories with the exhibition, Finding Fairyland. I'm Rodney Kayapal, the Curator of History at the Tampa Bay History Center. Fairyland was one of Tampa's first theme parks, and it was located at Laurie Park Zoo, and it opened in the 1950s, and it was a series of storybook vignettes, so there are over a dozen of them, uh, where children and families could walk through and really live among the fairy tales. Many nursery rhymes, along with Mother Goose and Brothers Grimm fairy tale classics, were represented in child-sized, three-dimensional figures that once populated Fairyland and are now on display at the History Center. The exhibit includes six different vignettes from the original Fairyland. We have Cinderella's pumpkin coach. We have uh, the spider from, from uh, Little Miss Muffet. The little kids could look eye to eye with the three little pigs. They could actually get into Cinderella's pumpkin coach and so, so you could really live the fairy tales and they had these uh, books that were concrete but they were open to the particular page that you were seeing and so the parents and children could read along with that particular section of the storybook as they're looking at the, the, the fairy tale right in front of them. Over the years as the zoo at Lowry Park grew, less attention was paid to fairyland and the fiberglass figures began to show their age. By the 1980s, uh, the Fairyland figures had uh, gotten a little disrepair. They, of course, were, were repaired as needed, but um, that kind of version of the zoo was beginning to wane. In the late 1990s, the book was closed on Fairyland. The storybook characters and their accompanying vignettes were transferred to a city storage yard, where they were left outside to weather the sun and rain without proper care and maintenance for over 20 years. Still, they represented an important chapter in the lives of many Tampa Bay residents. We grew up in Seminole Heights, so not far from Lowry Park, um, and I have five brothers and sisters, so we're a family of six. But being able to pack everybody up in the station wagon and go to Lowry Park was a big deal. It was a big, exciting day for us. And again, the fact that we could be kind of independent in Fairyland and our parents knew we were okay and we could wander around and enjoy what, what Fairyland had to offer and ride the train and, and have some ice cream, all of that was just really wonderful and it makes you feel happy and comforted. And I, that's what childhood should be. Owner of the Columbia restaurant, Richard Gonsmart, came to the rescue of the inhabitants of Fairyland, purchasing all of the figures. And he's begun the process of restoring them to pristine condition for future generations of children to enjoy. Most of the pieces we have here are not restored, but the Three Little Pigs and Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk you can see in their new condition. But uh, the idea behind the exhibit was to show these Fairyland figures in their pre-conserved condition so people can see kind of what's happened to them over the years, but you can also see the potential of the restoration that uh, is going to happen to all of them. Whether on exhibition today at the History Center or in the memories of grown-up children who remember Fairyland as it was, these aged and fading figures represent a connection to our shared past and possibly a rainbow bridge to our future. It's important that we restore some of these historic pieces of our, our, our past, um, particularly the ones that are more modern. Um, you know, here at the History Center we have things that are literally thousands and thousands of years old. But the modern history, the recent past, I think is something that really resonates with a lot of people. But it's also something that people have a hard time understanding is in need of preservation. And so preserving things that are you know, 50 years old, 60 years old, like these figures, I think sh gives them the importance that they deserve. And so people that are from here, hopefully they can learn about the history and have pride in that history and want to uh, preserve that history. And those that are new to here, they realize that the city of, that they've adopted here in Tampa uh, has a history as well.